Hey GTI fans, this is Zlot coming at you with another episode of Empyrean Galactic Survival. I'm here on the Geek Tech Industries server. Uh, we have it set on hard mode. We just recently came out of beta and we're now, and when I'm talking about betas, we not the game itself coming out of beta, just our server test coming out of beta and that's just testing our play fields and testing our sectors and and how how we wanted them to function there was a couple of tweaks that we needed to do uh, through the beta and we decided for for all fairness sake um, to do a wipe at the end of the beta and we restarted up the server uh, it's been truthfully it's been a couple weeks since we've done that uh, so, so since the last video, uh, we've wiped and I, we all started at first level again, crash landed and went through the whole process, got up to basically the same point we were at, um, actually maybe even a little bit further. I'm going to, I'm going to show you, um, some of the stuff that I built for the, the guild so far. Uh, there's a couple of things, um, we did eventually come back to dirt <clears throat> and that's where I am right now. Um, so now the facility on dirt is very similar to the one that it was before in the beta, but what I've done is um, pretty much everything is just shoved over to one side. Um, we've got our furnace in here and all the all the stuff up in the um, furnace shaft there so that's all the uh, the gear the, the oxygen and uh, fuel tanks the um, generators up in there um, and then we have all of the rest of the basic well what I mean by basic gear is is, is basic storage kind of base uh, crafting base even whatever you want to do at this base it's 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 pretty much a full functional it's just not it's not huge I mean this is pretty much it I'll show you one other room but so we've got the upper mezzanine where all the fl um, plants and flowers and stuff so uh, what I should do is actually go pick those right now look like they're all full so let's head up there um, so again, focus is mostly on uh, Derny and pumpkin and tomatoes to get those canned veggies going. Uh, also like my uh, kaffa. Um, now this will work really good on wind. It, it, kaffa wasn't working that great on uh, on the hotter planets like like on dirt here. It I I overheated myself once running around collecting. Um, collecting the the plasma for the large med packs uh, by uh, <laughs> by drinking too much kaffa so gotta watch that um, but now I, I'll pack around a little bit of water with me so that if I do that I can just drink some water right away and cool cool back down <clears throat> so let me just come on and last couple here just for completeness sake. Come on. You gotta, the, the target box is like in the center of the, it seems to be like the dead center. Yeah, okay. So that's outside. Let's get this side over here. And I just run along and spam my F key. And I miss that one anyway, that's okay. <clears throat> So I've have I have a bit of a uh, congestion issue last last week week and a half. I live in a part of Canada where uh, there was some large forest fires uh, causing vast, huge clouds of smoke, traveling hundreds and hundreds of miles, and it it was so eerie here. It was like 
it was supposed to be blue sky, but it looked like it was completely overcast uh, because of the smoke. And then breathing and stuff started getting a little hard, too. Um, I'm still suffering from that. Uh, other people are, too. Um, but uh, it's just it's, it's one of those things when you live in a live in an area where where it can be prone to forest fires you can get these uh, ridiculous crazy dry summers that cause a lot of problems so you notice this ship here this is my small vessel that I built when I came over uh, I didn't oh didn't notice a little patch of grass there I should have popped all that out now this is all pressurized oh well I guess we got grass coming through the floor derp a derp whatever um, so anyway, I didn't, the reflex aggressor getting in and out of it was really difficult. Um, it had a bunch of weaponry on it and it didn't even need, so to spawn it, you, you had to spend a bunch of, of materials that I didn't necessarily want to just be forced to like strip off of it. Uh, yeah, it performed really, it handled great and all that, but uh like i say it was really kind of kludgy getting in and out um and it and it had weapons that i never ever used on it so that were really expensive so this time around i decided not to actually spawn it <clears throat> and i went with a complete um unique build all of my own you notice i have a, a cockpit that can sit three people in it I've got my uh, fr I got a fridge and a oxygen station inside of there. Now you also notice that the entrance is at the top. Got a couple of windows that aren't matched in color because those got popped out already by a drone. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I really enjoy just putting a, a hatch over my vehicles because it's just easier to get in and out of. Um, and another very cool thing about the hatch is, so for example, let me just get in it here. Yeah, the, there we go. And then what I'll do is, actually I'll turn it on. Whoa, why does it do that? Don't turn the whole, I'm in my ship, yet it turns the base off. <sighs> okay, I'll go in through the P. Just turn the power on from here. Uh, I'm going to reopen this. You notice that has the blue um, barrier to it, which is the force field. So that actually is all sealed in. So I'm actually standing in my ship sealed in right now, as you can see. Uh, I can jump and I come out of the seal. Now, the great thing about this is if I'm in outer space or, or just like landed somewhere, even trying to mine or loot corpses that I've just shot, what I can do is I'm standing in my ship here and I can just pop my uh, drone out and just go do what I need to do. Meanwhile, I am still safe, well, fairly safe in my ship. Most critters can't jump up and get in my ship because it's just too high for them. Um, and I can also close the hatch afterwards so now even if they do climb up i'm i'm all sealed in uh but i'm out in a boat doing stuff with my drone how cool is that right you can't you can't do that kind of stuff in a, a sealed cockpit uh, and what i mean by a sealed cockpit is the is the type that's uh, all inclusive um you don't need to build glass around it or anything uh the the type I put in here was an open cockpit so that I could seal it in and make it as big as I wanted. So yeah, there's my ship. Uh, it's got some... The weapons on it are pretty simple. Uh, it's got a total of six of the mini guns and two of the advanced um, rocket launchers. So, or sorry, not two rocket launchers, but uh, four rocket launchers. So when I shoot rockets I shoot four at once and they're the homing type so they do require neodymium to craft but that's okay uh, neo isn't that hard to get and since I got a CV with a, a miner um, 
I can just do it all in luxury anyway, so not a big deal. <clears throat> so there is my ship. Um, here, we'll just turn that off for now. Continue the tour. So I also, you probably notice over here another room. This one is all sealed in. Uh, I made a indoor swimming pool encased in glass. Um, so this base, we moved over to, when we came back to dirt, we moved over to one of the larger water ponds and I'm getting that graphic glitch again. I probably have to update my video drivers. I'm getting, I get a, a funky graphic glitch with my, with water. Um, but whatever, I can live with it. It's not a big deal. It's just water so far. Uh, anyway, so this is all sealed in. You can see that it's 31 degrees outside, but in here it is all sealed in, 22 degrees. I didn't have to put oxygen in here because this is a, a dirt itself. The planet dirt has oxygen, a breathable atmosphere. So got my hot tub over here. So this is the uh, Olympic size swimming pool. Well, not quite Olympic size, <laughs> but you know. Not bad. Swim around. Woo! So, yeah, here I am swimming in my indoor swimming pool. As you can see, my temperature is 22 degrees still. Uh, now, if I... Can I go down lower? Can I get lower? Can I get lower? What about if I go like this? If I'm swimming, can I go down lower? No. So, okay. Anyway, uh, it would be funny if I could get low enough so I'd be under the water and then all of a sudden have ox oxygen, right? Never thought of doing that, but um, anyway. So there we go. My indoor swimming pool with uh, hot tub. Uh, we've got a little mezzanine up here for the... I call it my wet generator room underneath this, and I'll go show you that in a second. So we got a little uh, mezzanine here, covered mezzanine, well, indoor mezzanine, I guess you could call it. Just a little uh, uh, lounge area. Uh, so also you can hear the generators coming, the, the noise of the generators from here. I have them actually sealed into a room. Uh, and you notice, see, it's 20 degrees in here, all sealed up. And the reason I did that is is because this planet can actually get some very extreme temperatures to it that, and sometimes some extreme radiation too that can get uh, um, detriment or, or damaging to you when you're out just collecting, you know, your your wet generator products so uh, you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab this stuff right here oh it's in I got you know what okay let's deal with this stuff in my inventory really quick I'm just gonna go into my control panel from hitting P I'm gonna go into my food processor and dump all this stuff off that I just picked you'll notice a bunch of stuff in the food processor already um, so I've been making some pies and canned vegetables, even some emergency rations, large med kits. Got a whole bunch of eggs and was making energy pills because that's what you need for the um, um, large med or emergency rations. So what I'll do is I can make some more emergency rations. So let's do that because that's cool. And then once that runs out, which is pretty quick, because that's all I had, enough to make one. Wow. Well, you know what? That's okay. Get those going. I'm going to eat some pie. Because, yeah, pie. <laughs> nice. Okay. And can of veggies. There. No, it's it'll make 
veggies out of cans of veggies out of what I picked there. We'll let that uh, keep going. So I'm out of T6 alien plasma. I went and picked a whole bunch and made just a ton of med kits for myself. Um, there's still some left in there. That's okay. Good enough. So yeah, we got a indoor uh, generator room. Um, let's get this sorted here. Pick up this water, get these all going again. Uh, all this oxygen. So it's pretty. It's pretty easy to uh, to encase a room. Uh, getting the dirt back up through the um, back up through the the sealed stuff is not that big a deal. You can either use uh, narrow slots for your blocks, and they're like half half slots underneath and you can just pull the dirt up through um, that's probably the easiest way to do it uh, or you can just lay down one block and then beside it pull the dirt up beside it that'll cause it to pull up through the block and then continue uh, then dig out the other side of it lay the blocks into it now you have one block with dirt above it and then you can pull that dirt all the way across the rest of the blocks and that's what I did um, so let's continue here as I gab and I know I gab a lot let's grab this stuff get this keep this going here so this is my wet generator room as I call it uh, I don't know if anyone else coins these wet generators but I mean that's what they are they gotta be wet. Or else they don't work. And okay, so I am out of fuel. Let me grab some more. I had some spinning up in the fuel constructor. We'll just keep letting that run. Let's trigger up some more here. Actually here we can now that we're in here, we can actually dump off this stuff. That's all for that constructor anyway. That one muzzle well just queue up more. Keep that going. There we go. Uh, okay. Let's get this last one here. And, oops. Get that going. What else do we need? I'm going to put the rest of this stuff in my SV. Okay, and I got some more out here <clears throat> that I have going. It's not too bad right now. 49 it can handle. So basically this planet um, dirt is our planet that I use to get most of my um, hydrogen, oxygen, and water from because this is where I have a base where there's uh, where it's on water that makes it really easy to collect. So uh, also dirt is a really good mining planet. Um, for some reason, I don't see any asteroids. It might need a it might need a, a play field reset. Not that big of a deal. A reset's different than a than a a wipe. A reset is just basically reloading the play field with all the stuff in it, and it and it usually triggers the uh, meteorites again. Uh, and that also triggers on its own every two days too. Um, Okay, so that's... why did I do that? Come on. Come on. Come on, Zealot. Get it together. Get this done. Let's get this moving. Get these done. 
here we go. Oh, I might not have enough space here. And, oh, not quite. That's okay. I'll just... Uh, actually, I do in my taskbar. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, head back inside. Whoa! Sometimes it'll do that if you try and move the camera too fast. It'll like stop it. And you do a little woo dizzy spin. Get this back inside here. So I'm going to take this up to our supply depot up in space. Okay, there we go. A bunch of hydrogen, oxygen, and water. Uh, the three things you cannot generate in space. So I'm going to take those up here. Uh, let's go do that right now. So uh, you've seen dirt before. I don't need to take you around the, the uh, planet. I mean, it's, it's just a flat dirt planet. Uh, there are some mountainous areas, but uh, other than that, a little bit boring. Uh, we're not going to go mining right now, so let's just jump in here. Power this up. Oh, fill it up. Got lots of ammo. Not worried about that. And reopen this. Now the reason why I do that is I, it's just easier. Um, it's easier to get in and out of the cockpit when the, when the top is open. Um, it can be a little buggy sometimes, like it'll try and pop me out uh, way too high and then kind of bug out because I'm halfway in the grating. So it's... Okay. Let's just let's just head up there. And right toward the sun. So you'll notice the uh, paint job on this thing lights up when when you power it up. That's the texturing on it. Um, it's kind of cool. Now this thing actually performs quite nice. This SV has some large thrusters on it. Um, it's all made out of hardened steel, so it can take a better hit than the uh, claptrap could. Uh, the the reflex aggressor was also hardened steel too, but um, where am I going here? We want the there it is, the Supply Depot. So it's two clicks out and you can see it from here. That's awesome. Uh, now I've expanded this. This was just a little, a tiny little slap together um, spawn in base that that stick has spawned in and I expanded it quite a bit. Basically the only thing original from it is its core really. <laughs> Other than that, uh, uh, here we go. The supply, the, the base of the supply depot. It still needs all this decking needs to be painted. This needs to come out further here still. Um, so it's still a lot of work to do on it. But right now it's it's fully functional as a base. You'll notice upstairs here. So let me just fly around it here and I'll give you a little tour of the outside of it. Um, you notice those cement columns going up. We're texturing up marble. We're just trying out some different coloring. Uh, the green, the green marble looks pretty cool so far. There's an upstairs to it that is all hydroponics. Um, and yeah, you're probably thinking, is is that real? Is that a each one of those purple lights a, a grow light for nine plants? Yes. <laughs> in short yes took me a while to build this thing um, and basically I'll give you a little tour let's go inside so this is our supply depot to supply CVs and whatnot the guild in um, 
in the hidden sanctuary here, uh, it, it'll be supplied by the four planets. I've got, like I say, on dirt, we have the, uh, the one, um, the one forge down on dirt supplying the, the depot right now. So I can fly right in here and this is actually nice and roomy inside. Um, now it, it's kind of an optical illusion, but this is all sealed inside here and oxygenated. Um, kind of like the fact that I can just kind of fly around <laughs> inside here. Uh, lots of lots of space, lots of cargo. You can see, yeah, it might be a little bit overkill. Uh, there's some crafters and stuff. So we've got a centralized column in our centralized column here. Let me land this thing. Let me uh, come over here and uh, just land this thing. So here we go. Let's land in front here of this one. And I'm going to jump out. And now I don't have my jetpack on, but that's okay. There is a gravity generator on the base. So now you can see it's 22 degrees in here, even though that it looks like we're just open to outer space. Well, you can see the temperature's just cranked right up to two, negative 200 there, passing between those two pillars. So I don't need doors in this place. I decided to go with this theme of a really open concept uh, garage, so to speak. This is the, this is the garage of the supply depot. Um, so it's all oxygenated. I can actually take my helmet off. So here we are. Uh, it's, a, it's oxygenated, I can walk through here, and all of a sudden it's not oxygenated, I'm out in space. So I'll go back in here and I'm okay. Pretty cool. I like it. I like it. it, uh, it it's very functional. Um, so yeah, there's that. And we have all of our basics here. We've got um, an oxygen depot, even though it's oxygenated when you're out outside transferring stuff into your ship uh, or maybe building a ship outside uh, and you and you derped and forgot oxygen you can whip in here grab some oxygen um, and you won't die so here's our furnace that we stuck in here uh, we've got our emergency um, texturing to signify that this will kill you if you step into that texture so yeah don't want to walk beyond there you can get trapped in there and die those things just cook you to death we got an atm here another oxygen over on this side plus some medical stuff uh these are the four deco um, medical decos that actually do stuff you can see they can um pretty much get rid of all your different various ailments um with a medic station here to, to actually heal you and provide cloning. Uh, we've got the constructors over on the back here and a whole bunch of storage. <clears throat> Let's take you around and go upstairs. So, got our elevator shaft here. You can see the core was just down there. Not a big deal, this is a PVE sector so we can't get attacked by players there's no POIs uh, we could have the core out in the middle of nowhere out in the open and it's not going to get destroyed so I'm just going to go through here and pick this so this we have four sectioned off uh, hydroponic um, greenhouses so to speak and each one is sort of purpose-built uh, each one has fridges that are purpose-built and food processors that are purpose-built too. Uh, now, each of them can still be accessed through the control panel, obviously. Uh, so really, for it's a moot point uh, that there is one in each room, but it, it does make it handy for if you're, you're running around. <clears throat> Notice it's all obviously oxygenated and... Uh, um, 
sealed off in here so we're all comfortable without our helmets which is pretty cool um, it, actually here I can show you the stats on this building really quick so it is a class level 9 <laughs> it, it's actually kind of large I guess because it's got 8736 blocks to it uh, 1,269 devices, 82 lights, 39,000 triangles. Now, I'm not really sure what that triangle count means. Um, anyway, uh, eight of the T3 fuel tanks got a crap ton of fuel, but it actually goes through the fuel when you got the furnace cranked on. Uh, that furnace will eat up like half that fuel all on its own. Boom. <laughs> half the amount right now. Uh, obviously no warp tanks. It's not a CV. It needs 14,000 oxygen, almost 15,000 oxygen to fill the base with oxygen. But in the tanks, we currently almost have double. Uh, my rule of thumb is to, to pretty much have double that you need in the tanks. Because if you do have a breach, once you seal it, you want to have enough uh, to fill the base and have a, a bit of a backup supply again, or, or at least <clears throat> at least be able to fill the base again, right? So we've got 44 cargo boxes, 13 fridges, five food processors, three constructors. Uh, I guess it does not count the furnace as a constructor. Okay whatever um, you can see what it takes to build uh, 13,000 rock dust only 3600 iron uh, not even a thousand cobalt 3100 silicone that's because of all the windows so the iron silicone and really that's about it growing plots so there are 540 growing plots in this station yeah 540 over 100 in each section so let me pick this really quick I, I won't pick out everything um, I mean I guess I could I mean I guess I really should and get get it all crafting to show you guys the immense capability of a garden this size it's uh it's really cool not to mention if if we bring somebody here that's low level and all they got to do is run through the garden and pick it a couple times they'll probably hit like level 25 kind of ridiculous but yeah <clears throat> uh yeah you can you can you can level quite effectively with a large garden i've done it before in single player it's funny now keep in mind in single player i also had the setting set to um be slower progression so okay this is taking forever because this garden is so freaking huge i'll just finish up this section I, I won't go through the rest of them i'll just peek my head in and show you guys so we'll put all this in there so it picks a massive pile 288 plant fibers in one picking woo so we are already yeah, we can we can make in one shot. Um, well, let's see, two hundred eighty-eight divided by eight is that doesn't really translate that well. Well, I guess so. That's thirty. Yeah, thirty. Thirty-six. 36 grow plots in one picking worth of fibers. Not bad. Um, that's pretty awesome, actually. Uh, most uh, capital vessels, that's around the range of what a capital vessel needs for the amount of grow plots. So really easy to come if you're building a capital vessel, a, a, a plan by from a plan, you're going to spawn it and you need a bunch of grow plots, then you can come here and build them all at once boom <clears throat> instead of taking a week to build because grow plots suck to build uh, it's kind of funny that 
um, whenever I get them as, as loot, I consider them like uber loot. Because <laughs> they are. It's funny. So this is the other sections. The, there's two sections that are devoted to uh, tomatoes and durny. Durians, um, durnies, uh, durians, <laughs> and this one over here, this one is pumpkin and durian. So that, between those two, um, that is half the amount of grow plots devoted to just being able to make canned vegetables. So let's see if there's 540 divide that by two is um, uh, 270 grow plots for vegetables. Each grow plot or each vegetable can of vegetable requires three. So we'll divide that by three. So so 270 divided by three um, is almost seven four so hmm eight and a bit no twenty seven nine no eight eight and a half not quite uh okay so it should be able to make eighty some odd cans of veggies in one picking. That's pretty epic. 80 something cans in one picking. So right now we're, I'll show you our, we, we've got a little bit of a stash going. I moved a bunch of cans onto my CV, uh, but because we can just run through and pick 80 cans worth at a time, I wasn't that concerned about it. So let's go into the Food processors, canned veggies, we want fridges. So here's a canned veggie fridge here. So this was just me going through and picking it, picking it out a few times. So I pick, picked this out a bunch of times. I have a bunch of cans on, on the CV also, but right now, so that's uh, seven, 13, uh, 260 cans of vegetables on, on the base ready to eat. So, yeah, pretty much not going to starve anytime soon. Uh, so that's those. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff over here. I've got all the uh, texture plant protein um, and our cava beans. We've got uh, pear things and wheat. We've got honey and all the fruit. Uh, so this can, this is our coffee and donut section really. Um, so where we make coffee and fruit pies and, and stuff like that. Uh, and just pick the, the, the texture plant, plant protein is just good all on its own for adventuring for the insto heal and a little bit of stamina and, and, um, and food. It's, uh, it's really awesome. So let's go. We're going to head back down. So I plan on expanding the base, uh, make some personnel quarters up. I'm going to shoot it right out the, the elevator. We'll, we'll make another elevator coming off the uh, glass or coming off the second floor, shooting up through the glass. And I'm, I'm just going to like punch it out into space, like for as far as it can go until you know, so basically 300 meters from the core. Uh, so that's going to be this huge, long shoot of elevator going out into space. And I'll, I'll enclose that all in a glass and make it all sealed in. And then at the end of that will be crew quarters, um, another like little cafeteria section, um, things like that. But right now that's all kind of fluff. And it's not needed for the functionality of the base. Right now, the, the base functionality is completely up and running, as you can see, um, and is really, really functional. Like it just, like it, it just, life is easy. <laughs> life is easy now. Okay, I'm gonna put my helmet back on because we're gonna be heading out here. Hmm. 
Um, gravity generators generate too much gravity, by the way. Just, just saying. Just saying. It's a little... It just seems a little bit more than one. Than a factor of one. So I'm just going to float down. And... Oh, stop it. Here, let's... Get rid of my jetpack. There we go. Okay. I'm going to fire this up. And then reopen that. Now I'm going to jump in. That keeps my... Uh, keeps my... Hit above... Oops. Let's just slam into things. Yeah. Okay. So... That is the supply depot. Um... And what I was going to show you today uh, to finish off the episode is I'm going to go back over to wind down there. You can see I've, I've um, found all the resource meter uh, asteroids here. So I've been mining those um, quite a bit. I mean, we've got lots of resources now. So done some exploring with the CV too. Um, smashed a couple some POIs and got some stuff not not a lot of epic stuff I think I've only found one epic weapon so far got lots of boosts um, only a couple things of heavy armor but lots of power coils from from space space drones um, now what I plan on doing on wind is making my own private uh, base. So it's not going to be a guild base. Not to say guild members won't have access to it. I'll put a bunch of uh, access codes on everything that that'll that's fine for public consumption. But uh, other than that, it's going to be labeled as, as a private base. And that's where I can securely store stuff that I loot. I don't want to store everything on my CV right now because if, if my CV gets destroyed then uh, then I'm all my loot is gone so I uh, don't really want to store it at the supply depot that the it's uh, the the thing about the supply depot is anything at the supply depot is open game so things that I want to keep for myself I want to build my own base for then I encourage all the other guild members to do the same thing. Okay, so we're down on wind here. Let's get back over to... Now, I've got a place called Mar Marked Down as Base. Uh, it's, I don't actually have a base down yet. I've been crafting a bunch of blocks. Uh, I, I put some... Um, harvesting I don't I forget what the hell they're called anyway some wood harvesters I built four of those put them on the front of the HV and went around and harvested a whole bunch of trees so I'll, I'll probably just jump in my HV and show you that really quick and call it an episode uh, maybe ne next episode probably start building the base or or maybe you know what I'll I'll throw down the starter block. Why not? Why not? So, what I did is... There's the, um, the death trap again. So, all I did is I respawned in the death trap. Uh, so, the starter CV that I have is still over on dirt this time. As a spare CV. So, there's my death trap. Uh... I, I want to actually build it up here on this sort of rise here because I want some a view of the valley. I don't want to get too close over to here because, oops, stop that. I keep rotating instead of going forward. Um, because if we get a little too close over here, you'll see right there, you can see the... the uh, pole boundary so uh, we can't I don't want that visible from the base so basically what I did I went south until I couldn't see that 
was right around here somewhere. Um, and then I put a marker. And then I went over to where I want to be able to access water. So I want my base to be able to potentially come down into the flats here. Uh, so the, so my idea here is I want to access this these hot springs um, and build like a, an actual hot tub on the hot springs uh, with a tunnel access coming out from like the mountainside here. So I'll have a, I'll have this dug out straight into here and with a you know, like a hangar bay, um, and then come out with access to, I'll, I'll make an indoor swimming pool, hot tub, um, you know, wet generator room like I did down on dirt. Uh, but this time around, I'm going to be building it out of concrete, and I guess for the swim pool area, probably concrete and glass, but uh, the, the rest of the the structure is going to be up here on this kind of mountain top here. Um, so you can see when I was down there that the base marking, I had that base marked for about 300 meters away. Now, the reason why you don't want to go past 300 meters is because you can't. So if you want it to be able to reach, if, you're, if you want your blocks for your base to be able to reach a certain location, then make sure you're not putting your, your starter down more than 300 meters away from that location. So basically what I did is I, I found my, my two furthest points and I came in uh, and met them where they connect together and that was around right here where it says the base marking. Um, so I have 300 meters in that direction, 300 meters in that direction that I can build, 300 meters in that direction, and 300 meters in that direction. So you can see 300 meters in this direction will give me, that's 130. I'll be able to build out, and I'm going up a little bit, so that's kind of skewed. Um, so 160, so you can see I, I can cover a fair amount of ground with my base. I can make it quite massive. So we're up to 200. So I can I can literally like come right out and, and take over this entire uh, plateau here pretty much so you can see my distance see there we go that's 275 so I'm re reaching the outer limits of the distance of what my base can go to around here so there we go so I, I'll be able to take over the majority of this this plateau um, and for the reason I wanted up here as well for the view for starters I think it'll be great and because I'm going to be digging out the mountainside underneath it that's going to be where the garage is going to be down down in the basement um, so I don't really care that it's up on a plateau and this time around I decided I want to build with wood I'm gonna try and go with like a castle theme I think so the outer bailey walls will be stone or stone looking. Uh, I'll texture it up to, so that it looks um, like stone. Hopefully, hopefully there's a good stone texture for concrete. And then the rest of it's going to be actual wood, real wood blocks. I haven't actually built with wood yet, and I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, so I'm excited to go get get me some wood. So wood is making me excited. There we go. I'm just going to land. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to throw out the starter block. And I'll, I'll just show you the modifications that I've done to the HV. 
and land up, jump out, and oh, uh, see it's a little, there we go, good, right, because I had that open. Okay, so here we go, the HV, this is the blades that I was talking about that I added onto the front. <laughs> So I can actually, uh, I can mow down trees pretty quick with this thing. It actually eats up trees really fast. Uh, also a cool thing is, is it any rocks in the way it gobbles those up too. And um, I ended up gathering up quite a bit of uh, the, the basic resources from, um, from these like the, like magnesium and iron and all that just just from mowing down trees and, and hitting rocks along the way. So, so pretty fun. Um, and again, it this thing's such a beast that it just it, I got to be careful because it actually, if I'm going too fast, it, it it just mows the trees over instead of actually harvesting them. So I got to be a little bit more gentle on the gas on that. Uh, so yeah, let's take the let's grab the stuff. So I've got a bunch of blocks made. I'm going to grab all these concrete and wood blocks and I've got a starter made. What I need to make, get making, I've got a bunch of door blocks. I've got a bunch of looted, the, most of these are all looted. <laughs> I think I made some of them. No, I, uh, no, I don't think I made any of these blocks. These are, I think, all looted from POIs. Um, so yeah, even advanced constructor, it's kind of cool. A couple of repair bays. So uh, I probably made the spotlights. Anyway, so here we go. We've got enough to get a large building up and running with uh, quite a few thousand blocks. Uh, what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, five and a half thousand blocks. That should get us the foundation, a good foundation. So I won't worry about any of those. But what I should do, like I was saying, is let's go into the builder and get a bunch of, oh, I got more blocks in there I was making, right? Excellent, excellent. So there we go, lots of wood. You can see I collected a bunch of wood with the harvester. Uh, so I've still got a few thousand more logs. And that can generate a whole bunch of blocks for me. Hopefully, hopefully I'll have enough. If not, I can go get more. So let's get some windows going. Those are in blocks. Window blocks. I don't need armored ones. Hell, I'm making this out of wood and concrete. So we're going to need a bunch of windows. Let's, let's queue up 100. Anyway, 100 will get us a good start. So as, the, as it crafts that up, we're going to jump into my SV. I'm going to show you how handy this thing is. Oh, come on, what are you doing? Step back. Step back. Why are you not stepping back? Hmm? Come on. It's being difficult. Normally there. See, I can walk right in. Wasn't letting me do that on that side, I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's get this powered up. <clears throat> got lots of oxygen. Um, I don't think I got anything in the fridges. I do need to eat a bit, so let's eat a bit. I can throw that in the fridge too, even though it's got lots of time left. Okay, so let's open this back up. You can see how it rubbed against my head there and kind of ejected me out. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's fly up over here. Get nice and close. So, we need to... We need to lay the the base somewhere around here because um, I'm thinking it 
I don't think it's more than 300 meters straight down. Now keep in mind we are going forward a bit, so... But... What are we at here? Yeah, so we can still keep... We can go straight down quite a bit, so I think we want to put the core... Because I, I think it also depends on how high and how low you can go with the core tier. I think it's 300 meters in every direction. So I think putting the base up near the mountain top is a good way to go. That way we can drill way down deep, uh, 300 meters, and we can build straight up 300 meters. So we can make this thing just massive. So let's... We've got a dude over there. It's making me a little nervous. But the great thing about this is we can just level this off. The thruster noise is going to drive me nuts there. There we go. There we go. Okay, I've got the canopy open, so if I eject out, I'll just be standing in the canopy. And let's launch the drone. And I'm going to tab out, tab back in so I get my radar so I can see the temperatures and all that. So you can see how handy a SV is to have that you can actually stand inside, launch your drone, and still actually be inside and sealed up. Hmm? Isn't that cool? Handy, handy. That's why I built it like that. So down here. Okay. So let's get rid of some of this crap. Uh, what is that? Can we remove it? Yep. Okay. Pop that. <laughs> uh, this will just get destroyed doing it. That's okay. 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 So. Let's do it right here get our base starter oops I've, I had some hydrogen still left on me now it is going to be facing whatever direction my guy my avatar inside here is facing so I am currently facing exactly the direction I wanted to be so perfect I wanted to be facing this direction, and that's the direction I'm facing. So good. Uh, what that means is the blocks will, um, I don't have to run things on funky angles. I can go straight, and it's the direction that I want to be going in. Okay, so let's, should I just plunk it here? Because we're going to have the wall, the building is going to be coming straight up here anyway. This can be like in the, the bottom of one of the Bailey Towers at the front. So yeah, just right there. That's good. Okay. So, there we go. We've started our base. And we can get some blocks on here now. Get some concrete blocks. Yeah, let's... Actually, we'll... we don't need our CAFA with us right now. Just got to get a bunch of blocks down. Now I'm going to go with a concrete base. Get that as far as possible in there. In both directions. Okay. Like I say, this thing is going to be massive in scope. It's, it's going to go way beyond a class 10 base. Um, okay. So now that I've got that lit out, I can, I can start making other portions, but I think... I think what I want to do is I want to continue this floor. Um, 
And do I want to do my drilling and drill out the bottom and then start connecting up with that? I might want to do that. So do I leave the core there? I don't want to leave the core at the front just for aesthetic purposes. We'll uh, come across here, fill this in. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be the front wall. So let's continue this. Come on. Now is it maximum of blocks it'll do? It looks like maximum of blocks. So it's not direction, it's blocks. Yeah, so we can, come on. What I wanna do, I wanna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I wanna go as high as fricking possible. Not really sure how high that is. I'll, I, I'll have to set up my integrity and make sure that it's not going to collapse. But I know this will be fine. I'm just going to make this go as high as possible. Okay, We're getting there. So basically, there we go. I'm, oops, went too far with my drone. And that's a cool thing about this cockpit is when you do go too far with your drone, you don't accidentally step off your cockpit and fall, um, which I've done before to my death into lava and stuff. So yeah, it, it, this is much safer, much safer. Uh, you know what, guys? I think we've got the base started i'm gonna keep working on the base off camera uh, i'll be digging out the tunnel underneath i'll be i'll be adding in uh so the tunnel underneath is going to be the, the the garage it's also going to be probably where all the loud generators and all that stuff is going to be down below um so that when you're upstairs in the actual base you don't hear any of that crap so there we go some night vision on for you guys we've got another base started on wind or at least my my private castle at least that that's what i hope it's gonna be like as a castle anyway uh thanks for joining me guys uh next episode uh we'll we'll come back and we'll probably keep working on the base some more um it'll be further along because uh, I'm going to do a whole bunch of work off base. This, this thing is going to be a massive, long, uh, lot of work. Uh, it's going to be a, a, the biggest thing I've ever built in the game, for sure. Um, and it's going to be mostly for looks uh, and functionality, but, but a lot of it is going to be looks. I, I haven't really done anything for looks, really. It's gonna, it, most of the stuff I build is all for practicality and, and functionality. Uh, so this time around, I'm going to go a little over the top and do like, you know, a wood stone castle. Uh, okay, guys. Hope you like this episode. Like and subscribe. And next episode, we'll continue on. Uh, we'll work on the base a little bit more. Maybe we'll go smash a POI or something. But chances are we'll keep working on the base because I really want to get this done so that I can when I do smash POIs, I have a place to store stuff. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to work really hard on digging it out, getting the basement done, getting the basics up and working so that it's actually a functional base uh, so I can start storing stuff and doing stuff out of it uh, and then expand the top of it up on up top. And, uh, and yeah, 
this will be my new home. So we also have uh, another series coming out that I'm about to push out. Uh, I've been doing a uh, Dawn of Galaxy series, uh, single player, and expect to see that out in the next couple of days. Uh, I have a bunch of episodes made already and I'm gonna be continuing with that. Um, and that's, it's pretty interesting. It's really, it's, it's kind of hardcore survival based uh, at the beginning, that's for sure. Uh, it was, it, in my opinion, it's been pretty difficult um, and I, I've liked it so far. So, so if you want to check it out, that'll be a next uh, a playlist coming up. It'll be our Dawn of Galaxy one. And uh, you'll see me uh, trying to survive the onslaught of aliens. Um, so guys, until next time, I'll see you guys later. And like and subscribe. Take her easy.